Hey, welcome back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. Thanks for being with us. And uh, I'm Chris Olman, of course, in the studios here, actually in the studios. You can see the backdrop and our logo there. But we're going to uh, we're going to run down to Ann Arbor right now and uh, talk a little bit with Paul Kretko. He's the president and CEO of Ann Arbor Spark. Paul, it's always good to see you. How you doing? Doing well. Thanks for for asking. Good, good. So let's talk a little bit about Spark's activities down there. You've been administering some grants, three that come to mind right now. Yeah, what's interesting for us during COVID is that I think in our past conversations, Chris, you you know that um, we've had a very you know, robust public-private partnership here for the last 16 years. And Spark always thinks very entrepreneurially and always uh, does new things. So in COVID, what's happened is local government, um, the state, uh, private individuals and foundations have come to us and asked if we could uh, help by delivering uh, direct grants assistance to uh, small businesses in our, in our communities. And for us, that's a different kind of work. We normally work with mature companies that are um, GDP producing. And what I mean by that is they're companies that sell goods and services outside the region. Our, our lane normally isn't local businesses that are uh, serving the local population. Um, and so um, this was a whole new uh, area of activity for us. We sa I said yes to every request. So at the beginning, uh, this was a, an effort that was spearheaded by uh, some money from Washtenaw County. Um, but what was very interesting and very appreciated was uh, a number of individuals uh, stepped forward. The largest uh, gift was $1 million into that fund from Doug Song. Doug Song, you know, is the founder of uh, Duo Security. Uh, he, they were recently acquired by Cisco. Um, Doug is a major shareholder and Duo um, received significant you know, benefit from that purchase. He contributed a $1 million personally. Uh, there was money from the Bank wow. of Ann Arbor, the Ann Arbor Community Foundation, uh, NEI, Ralph Wilson, Pittsfield Township, and so on. And so we then took the money from all of those folks, created a program, and made grants to small businesses um, of under 50 um, persons in size, 50 member staff in size. The state then came up initially with a $10 million allocation across the state. And they look to the lead, what they quote the leading economic development organizations to be the delivery vehicle. Since we were already doing this um, by a local effort, um, we then were e able to easily move into that program. What was a little different, the first program we, we distributed um, about $1.3 million. Um, and then um, that was that was your resiliency fund. That's the business resiliency fund. And now I want to be sure with your audience that program is over. So okay. we, we there, there's if a listener is on and says, "Hey, I want to apply to that program," we've dispersed all the money that was given to us. Then the Michigan Small Business Relief Program, the state MEDC, reallocated money inside their budget, made ten million available across the state, and they they picked what they consider to be the 15 leading organizations. And that had a little different flavor. The Washtenaw program was just Washtenaw uh, County. The Michigan Small Business Program, we, um, under something that Snyder set up, uh, are asked to sort of quarterback a six county region that includes Washtenaw, Livingston, Lenaway, Hillsdale, Monroe, and Jackson. And they provided funding to us uh, under that program, it was a little under a million dollars. Um, and we then allocated by population those dollars uh, to those six counties. And those funds were distributed out uh, to businesses under um, uh, 50, 50 people on their staff that were impacted by COVID. What's recently happened, and I think you may have been following this, is that the legislature um, under the CARES Act, the state of Michigan received about $450 million to do a variety of things. The legislature, uh, in allocating that through a supplemental budget uh, in July, put $100 million into what they're calling the Michigan Small Business Restart Program. 
And the legislature in their authorization made the same decision that MEDC had made earlier. The delivery mechanism was the 15 uh, regional public-private partnerships in, in the state of Michigan uh, is the vehicle. So we received, um, we got an allocation uh, of more than $8 million. Um, we, the applications have been, uh, been accept, being accepted under that program over uh, the last three weeks. They closed yesterday. Today is August 6th, so I, I don't want to mess up your, your calendar timing and broadcast, but those applications uh, have closed and we are now processing them. Um, again, we're, we're responsible for the six counties, so we're allocating the money again by population among the six counties. Uh, for Washtenaw County in particular, it'll be about $3 million of grants that we will make to small businesses and another one and a half million in Livingston County. And then the balance is, is, is allocated among the four others. Spark provides all of the, the um, distribution of those monies for the other counties. So the other counties will identify who they would like to receive these grants through their application process they'll communicate it to us and then we do um, the actual disbursement of those funds. A little nuance in the, 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 the Michigan Small Business Restart Program was that um, when the first program, the earlier Michigan Small Business Relief Program, that was, that was ahead of all of the, the um, you know, the sort of the racial re reconciliation issues that have been going on in the country after, after um, you know, George Floyd's uh, death. Um, and this, the legislature put a stipulation that 30% of the money under this new program, at least 30%, has to go to women-owned, minority-owned, or veteran-owned businesses. Um, our applications are showing that we're going to be probably 60 to 70% will be uh, what we're going to see when we ultimately make the awards. Those awards will be, have to be out the door before the end of August. So between now and end of August, we'll have to finalize the roster. But the one thing I wanted to share with you uh, um, is that the, the demand is, is well above uh, you know, what we're able to serve. We, the applications that we expect are probably 1,500 uh, from Washtenaw County and 700 from Livingston County. And the maximum grant we're allowed to make is $20,000. So if you kind of just do some rough math, you're going to see that we're not going to be able to service uh, all the needs. We are putting a local priority on uh, child care and daycare small businesses because we think that's an important enabler for first responders and others um, who uh, need to get back to work because they're they're in the category that is is uh, um, you know uh, uh, needed to be back at work that they, they can't work from home and so we're going to see if we can. Uh, uh, emphasize um, the support to those kinds of, of uh, uh, businesses because they, uh, you know, take care of other people's children, which allow them, those individuals to go back to work. So well, those are what, that's, an, that's an important area to play in because they, they, they are considered essential employees have to be at work in some of those positions. And, you and, and it you is, got, you got, you got the word for me. It was essential. I was, it was escaping me. The, 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 the well, I was trying to do sign language, but I couldn't get it through to you. <laughs> yeah. Well. yeah. And then, you know, the thing I would share with you is that in our normal work, um, we're seeing, uh, uh, which is good news, I think for the community, we're seeing um, a significant pipeline of projects um, that are continuing uh, in our normal lane, those mature companies, manufacturers, IT companies in that area uh, are making investments. And we had yesterday, uh, we announced sort of a project, uh, not sort of a project with a company called May Mobility, uh, which is a autonomous vehicle uh, shuttle company. You may have uh, mm -hmm. seen them do work in Grand Rapids, a little bit in Detroit. They're Ann Arbor based. Um, we announced yesterday that they are expanding and are going to add 100 employees. Um, similarly, you know, we talked, we talked uh, maybe the last time uh, I was on your program about a company named KLA, which was a, a Silicon Valley uh, company is a Silicon Valley company 
Um, they uh, wanted to develop an R&D facility in Ann Arbor that, you know, this is all pre-COVID, this was put in place, they started construction. The good news there is they uh, intend to hire 650 people um, and they already have hired more than 250 and are continuing uh, in a more in a difficult way, onboarding new people in terms of the COVID environment. But so so one of the things I wanted to share with you is that um, uh, we were really happy to serve the community in the way we have to be able to step up. Um, you know, Spark on a on a good year, a normal year for us operating budget is about seven and a half million dollars. All the dollars that have come in through the three programs that I mentioned uh, earlier in our conversation are gonna to total about $11 million more that have, we've been able to funnel through um, our uh, program. And for the most part, this new program, the state is allowing us to take a 5% for admin, but all those other programs we administered, uh, every dollar went uh, directly to the businesses. We didn't take, uh, had, didn't apply any administrative expense to it. Paul, let me, uh, let me ask you real quick while I've got your, your, your Michigan Small Business Restart Program. Yeah, tell me about that. Well, that's the one I mentioned. That's the one um, that uh, is the $8 million applicate, uh, application okay. from the state that we just talked about. And I mean, the main feature there is um, that the business has to be uh, less than 50 employees. It has to be able to demonstrate an impact from COVID um, on their whatever uh, business expenses that they can't meet. And um, uh, then, as I said, the layer over that was the notion that uh, the state wanted to emphasize minority women and veteran-owned businesses. And, and we were seeing that in terms of our application pool. And uh, like I said, we, that's the one we're focusing on. Can we find uh, those, those child care businesses uh, that may need a little help uh, at this point in time? Is it a Actually, I made a mistake too, Paul. I, I, I mentioned that that program, but I wanted I, I wanted to talk about the business recovery center that oh, you guys. Sure. Are, oh, no problem. Yeah. Well, so one of the things that we're very good at, as you know, is is working. Uh, at least half of our efforts in any given year are helping uh, startups and early stage companies uh, grow, particularly in the technology space. But one of the things that that builds is an expertise about how to work with businesses that are struggling uh, or trying to put resources together, trying to, to keep their, their momentum uh, moving forward. So we have a lot of expertise in sort of the technologies they're working in, but also the, the problems and, and how to help businesses that are in that early stage and struggling. And, and quite frankly, those, those problems and issues are very similar to what has impacted uh, small businesses in our community uh, when all of a sudden their revenue is taken away from them or they're told by the governor's executive order that they have to close. So we opened all of our resources that we normally uh, use to just focus on early stage technology companies to all the businesses um, in, our, in our community. And um, th th we created a, a, a web address that you can find at our web uh, site, which is annarborusa.org and you type in business recovery center or click on the, the, the link there. And what we found already is uh, we've had 17,000 visits um, to, that, um, to that hub. And so that, that's been a, a great reference. I mean, there are a lot of tools out there to help businesses, but there's also a lot of confusion out there, whether it be, you know, how can I, how can I access a PPP loan? How, what, what are, are available programs from the state if I'm working on creating uh, personal protective gear because the state made an emphasis to try to build up our own resources. So that's that's the other the other thing that's really important. And we then also have completely moved um, all of our training and events. We do 150 or more events a year in our accelerator facility in downtown Ann Arbor. Obviously, we had to close that facility, although we've reopened it recently just for the tenants uh, that are occupying that. Um, but we have moved all of our programs to a virtual effort, and so people can access that the training and information online. Um, news for you, I think, uh, our 
uh, you've covered this. We, um, over the last five years, have developed a 10-day long uh, technology uh, festival event with a series of uh, particular programming. You know, the, I think you've even been at it, uh, which is our Tech Trek event um, and our annual meeting. We had intended to already move that from June to September, pre-COVID, um, and we're going to do that live the third week here in Ann Arbor uh, of September. That's all going to be uh, presented virtually now, and um, we're kind of excited about that because we won't lose momentum, and we think we're going to get a lot of people uh, participating virtually uh, that, that uh, uh, would have would have attended in person, but we also think we're going to get some folks that may uh, from around the country to to uh, participate uh, the, that might not have otherwise. So our whole program is is going to shift into uh, the third week in September, and we're also going to uh, be doing our annual meeting virtually um, in that week in September. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys are always doing stuff for your business community. We appreciate your efforts. Paul Kretko, the president and CEO of Ann Arbor Spark. It's always good to spend time with you. Keep up yeah, the good work. Paul. Likewise, anytime. All right. Take care. You're, uh, you're part of the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman. We'll be right back with more. All right. Hey, you're Let me it's know. rolling. All right. Hey, Paul, hold on to that because I've got some other questions for you. We're going to hold Paul Kretko over. Paul Kretko, of course, the head of Spark in Ann Arbor. You're on the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman. We'll be right back with more. Paul Kretko.